This is a very exciting month for CFP Distilled. I'm gonna tell you why I dressed up for this special occasion. We've got one of the guideline authors as a special guest this month. It's March, 2022. There's a brand new chronic pain guideline in this month's CFP journal. There's concussion tips, there's rapid fire pearls in every month. We take a look at the most clinically relevant articles that you need to know for the CCFP exam or for clinical practice and distill them down. You're in the right place if that's what you want here at CFP Distilled. Great clinical pearl for those patients who come in with a single swollen leg. You're worried about a DVT, so what's your first test? The Thrombosis Canada guidelines say if they're high risk, go directly to ultrasound. And this case report shows why. 76 year old guy came in with DVT symptoms. The D dimer was negative, yet the ultrasound still continued to show a clot. So if you're worried about a DVT in a high risk patient, you can skip the D dimer, go straight to ultrasound. Kids and head injuries, the Canadian Pediatric Society recommends a skull x-ray, but when? When kids have a large body hematoma and you need to decide, do we need to CT this child or not using the PCARN or CASH2 rules? So add that to your arsenal of tools. Consider you doing a pediatric skull x-ray if there's a large body hematoma to reduce the overall radiation risk while using those other tools. A clinical pearl for you, for your folks with recurrent cellulitis, they've got chronic leg edema. Which intervention can you do to prevent cellulitis from happening again? An RCT with 84 people found that compression stockings reduce the incidence of cellulitis from 40% down to 15% in just six months. Best of luck for those of you still studying for the exam. And don't forget, you can watch our videos online if you attended the course this year, right up to the examination. All right, so I know I promised you a special guest. One of the authors of this month's CFP Journal articles is here in the CFP Distilled Studio. That's right. I'm one of the folks who helped write the chronic pain guideline from the peer group. I'm really excited that they invited me to be part of this group, and I might not be invited back because I'm not authorized to speak on behalf of the group, but they've always put out phenomenal guidelines. There's no industry sponsorship, and this month's guideline is on chronic pain, specifically osteoarthritis, low back pain, as well as neuropathic pain. Now, there's way too many other conditions and way too many individual drugs, and they did a literature review for each and every one of these. And it's amazing how they were able to summarize all that content and put it into a single page. So take a look at the resource here. By far and away, the best treatment, needless to say, is exercise. It's nice to know that the evidence still supports that. So what about the individual conditions? We want to take a look at osteoarthritis first. Take a close look. Intraticular corticosteroids, very effective. SNRIs are really good for osteoarthritis as well as the other two conditions studied in the guideline. So I hope you find this summary helpful. I hope you find this guideline useful. Fantastic guideline from the peer group on chronic pain. An interesting article in this month's CFP journal that compares return to learning and return to play. So two aspects we need to consider when we have a child and patient post-concussion going back to activity. So two areas to consider. What it turns out is we've been pretty good at return to play recommendations, but when we think about return to learning, we may maybe even sending people back a bit too early. There's a stepwise algorithm for return to learning that maybe we should use a little bit more. Thanks for joining us. I hope to see you next month at CFP Distilled. As always, check out the reviewcourse.com if you're studying for the CCFP exam. We've just announced our 2022 summer dates. If you're writing in fall 2022 or if you want to head start studying for the 2023 CCFP exam, check out the reviewcourse.com. See you there.